Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. In this video, I want to go through these two colonies right here, show you what we're doing and what we're dealing with here in North Middle Tennessee. So in some parts of the country, we are t hearing people talk about drawing supers out and flows. That time is done for us. And there's people that keep asking me these questions. Why do I still have three deep boxes on? Cayman, why do you feed pollen patties? Cayman, why are you feeding your bee sugar syrup? Cayman, why do you exist? I really don't know some of these questions and the answers to them, but I will do the best I can in this video. Let's get into these colonies and see what's going on and inspect them. It's been a couple weeks, this time of the year in summer. It's the most crucial time of the year in Tennessee. It's hot. There's not very much nutrition at all. Robbing's going on. We haven't had good pollens for a month and a half. Haven't had nectar for at least a month in any quantity. And these bees are more irritable they need TLC and this is where we start seeing colonies go backwards is in summer. All right, so that's a good sign right there. Lots of bees at the top. And the reason we have three deep boxes on is right towards the end of the flow when they still had a massive population, a bigger population than what you see now. We are just like, you know, all these bees are sitting here. We're not making honey with these colonies that we made up in April. We might as well just feed the heck out of them and get some extra comb. So I've already taken two of them out. But as you can see in this top box right here, we have some nice Premier foundations drawn out into some combs. And there's not much feed in there. So we definitely are going to consider either yanking that off today and storing that or just adding feed and letting them have it. So you can see we have a two gallon feeder over here with some sticks down into it. And that has worked really good. So far that feeder is from Motherload and I really like their American made products. I think the prices are pretty reasonable as well, which is one of the reasons why I like them. So this box is very, very light. Not a whole lot of resources in that box. Now, all right, this is more like what I'd like to see right here. I'm looking into these combs and you see all that capped honey and sugar syrup, that's important. It's critical this time of the year. And so I've got 10 frames in these boxes. And so I'm just going to kind of go over a couple frames. I anticipate and expect that these are not going to really have a lot of brood and brood will probably start about on the third frame in. That's not always the case, but it gives me a much higher percentage of a chance of that being the case. And that is not the case. This is mostly food. That is excellent. There needs to be plenty of food, but we also need to check the queen and see if there's brood. I've had several colonies. I say several. I don't know. 15% actually um, supersede their queen this time of the year. So let's drop on down to the center frame and see what's up. All right, now I'm seeing some brood here. And this, you know, sugar syrup and all that, the honey, that's great. But without protein, these bees aren't going anywhere fast. So there's emerging bees coming out of here, and that's great. That doesn't mean we necessarily have a queen, though. I want to see eggs. I want to see larvae. Let's see if we can find any eggs in this. No, I am... Not seen. The lighting's not the best under this shade tree. So I was hoping to see some on that frame. I don't see the queen, so I'm just going to set it down for a moment. And we may drop down to the bottom box if we have to. Mostly food, brood, and food. Not seeing any eggs. Hopefully she's staying down in that bottom box and just kind of dropping up into the top a little bit. Say drop and climbing up into it. Another pretty good frame with a lot of food, but I'm wondering if that's keeping her hem down to that bottom box a little bit. So we are going to drop down to the bottom box. This is crucial, especially if you're trying to run 10 frames in a 10 frame box. Some beekeepers, once they get them drawn to 10, they will drop it down to nine. I prefer keeping 10 these days.
Okay. Well, most of the time in the second box I'm done. I already see what I want to see and then I'm finished. But this hive is going to be a little more high maintenance. And yes, there's a lot of weight in this box right here. The, these bees are just not near as big as they were a month and a half ago. Definitely have dropped the population down significantly. Let's see what we have down in here. All right, lots of brood. And yes, all right, we got larvae, lots of pearly larvae down in here. Not much bee bread. That's normal for this time of the year. Man, I, I would do anything just about to get a good pollen flow this time of the year. It'd make the season so, so much easier. And yes, we have a queen in here. I'm seeing some young stuff down in there as well. But most of the brood appears to be down in the bottom box. And she has worked her way back on down. I haven't had an excluder on this colony all year. This comb, let's see what's going on with it. Bee bread. A little bit of larvae. All right. There's not a lot of resources in that one, though, as far as food resources. This colony isn't on the brink of starvation, but we never, ever during this time of the year want our bees to feel like they're getting close to running out. We want them to feel like there's excess of anything. So I'm going to do something that's absolutely crazy to a lot of beekeepers. When you have a name like Cayman, people expect you to be different. That should be a t-shirt. Woo-hoo! That bee just about flew in right between the patty and my thumb. So we have taken off that layer of material, and that is so that the bees can get more access to this patty. And I am going to stick this right on here and slice this up into sections. And this is a little more time consuming. It'd be better if we did this beforehand, really. But this is very critical with the small hive beetles that we have, that there's more surface area and they can access it as quickly as possible. And now they can get in between all of that and be that'll be in a really much quicker process. So we are gonna smoke these bees up from the bottom. Oh, that box has got some weight right there. Woo. Look at this. Ah, it's like a Lincoln log box right here. A lot of my Man Lake boxes on my last order of 300 look like uh, Lincoln log houses. I don't know why, but they all do. Lots of it. And we are going to... I'm just going to leave this on. The bees are in good shape and it'll let the heat get away from that cluster down at the bottom. What we're going to do is there's bees down in there. I'm going to kind of smoke them a little bit, kind of drive them out a little. And then this is a feeder. Gosh, how many years have we had these, Laurel? We've had these for probably, what, seven years? Eight years, something like that. It's been a long time. And I leave them out in the sun all the time. And they're still good. Um, I, I got these feeders um, online. I'm going to leave a link down below. And we use them whenever we just need to feed a little bit here and there. I've got one to one. I'm pouring into this two gallon feeder. And there is a lot of small hive beetles up in here. Gosh, look at all those small hive beetles that the bees corralled into that frame feeder. Unbelievable. Well, it is believable, unfortunately. You can see where the bees have actually glued down. There we go. They'll bee glue these sticks down at the bottom, and you'll end up with them not floating up towards the top. So I'm gonna throw another stick or two in there. Ideally, what I'd like to have is two of these sticks as floats. Honestly, we don't lose a lot to drowning at all. These sticks do help a little bit. Let's be realistic here. Right now we're losing 
750 to 1,000 bees every day, but we're also increasing by a good number every day too. And the bees die outside the hive all the time, like 1,000 a day when they're really big or more, sometimes as many as 1,500. So it happens that sometimes those bees just die in your feeders. If they're already weak and on their way out, if they fall into the syrup, they're just weak, they won't be able to crawl out. So, you know, if I see 20, 30, 40, 50 drowned bees in a frame feeder, I'm really not all that concerned about it. I'm not. And that's just my opinion on that. Now, if I'm seeing hundreds and hundreds and thousands, that tells me something's wrong with the colony. They're queenless. They got European fowl brood. They have high viruses and mite loads. So these frame feeders are kind of a, a nice warning sign of something's wrong with this colony. That's the way I look at it. Okay, so good bit of bees up towards the top. There's more food up in the top of this one. And so if we have too many frames of sugar syrup in a colony, what do you do? Now look at this frame feeder right here. I'll get back to that answer in a second. They cleared that out last time I fed them and I didn't have any sticks in it at all and I don't see any dead bees down in there, do you? So healthy bees can really climb out of frame feeders really well and these mother load have nice grips on the side of them. You can get them with caps and ladders too. It's just I, uh, I prefer not to have them myself. I just, I've always done it this way. It's the way I like to do it. Now what can you do with excess frames of food like if this colony doesn't need this box up top and you've got frames that are very full up here what i've been doing and i've got like 50 hives with triple deeps and just in this yard we make up nukes we make up splits and if they need food we just pull out a frame like this shake all the bees off and then put it in that split and they then they have gosh i don't know six seven pounds of food that's that's a pretty good bit in that frame so there's not a whole lot of bees up in here, which is to be expected. This is really just extra storage space and areas to get bodies out of the brood area to keep it cool. So you can see how we have feeders, a feeder on this side and then a feeder on the inside of this. And that's when we're feeding with our hose and just going through the yards and feeding, feeding with our pump and hose. And you can just pull those lids off to the side a little bit and feed them and put them back together as opposed to if they're on the same side both the feeders are going the same way and it kind of blocks things up. Let's get down below and see what's going on. Halfway decent bit of bees. It's amazing how much the colony has reduced in size since May. A significant amount but they're in conservation mode our goal right now is to keep mites low keep nutrition up and make sure that we have a good queen in the colony all right so there's a decent bit of brood in that one and yes there is eggs down in there so honestly I can stop here we got some larvae some uh, capped brood all kinds of things going on but I would like to see more food down into here I am seeing that in the adjacent frame up top, but I want to see food close to the brood as well. This colony is not in dire straits, but we ne again, we just never want them to get to that point. So this one looks like it has a little bit more brood up in the second box. Oh, there's a nice fuzzy drone. Put those frames back together. And what we're going to do with this pollen patty, and what we need to do is probably throw some beetle traps in here, some beetle blasters or something like that. Actually, I've got a video that will be perfect for that. Stay tuned. It's a new type of beetle trap. A little bit similar to one of the others, but I think it opens up the door for a few more opportunities for mite and, uh, no, no, <clears throat> beetle elimination. Too much, <laughs> Laurel? Mite elimination is good, too. We really enjoy that. I tell you. I, when I got into bees, I, I thought it was all about saving bugs, and now I find myself killing a lot of bugs, like beetles and stuff like that. Good bunch of bees on that lid. What we can do is 
go like that and just knock those, they will crawl back into the hive through the entrance and it'll be all right. Good bit of weight in the second box. That is excellent. Yeah, a half decent bit of bees. And the, all right. And there's not... It looks like, yeah, there's more brood up in this box and there's a little bit down towards the center. So we're going to just split this patty right in half. And throw half of them down below and half of them up top. Yeah, I think that'll actually work quite a bit better. It's always best to have these patties as close to the brood as possible. Just about slipped and dropped that box. All right. Call me crazy. I'm actually in the process of doing a test right now on a couple of different types of pollen patties. These are Ultra B. Uh, B. Man, everything sounds the same in this industry. Ultra B patties. And they, they work pretty good. They're not as good as they used to be, though. They've tweaked the recipe, and they just don't eat them quite as fast. A lot more leftovers on the bottom board. <laughs> and we are just going to go like this. All it takes is about a size of a bee in between so they can get in there. And if a beetle does get up in here and lays an egg or two, then a bee can get up there and yank those eggs out and chuck them. Um, we'll get a little bit of larval uh, issues from small hive beetles doing this, but it's not real, real bad. And I think it's worth the, the protein. All right, smoke this on down so we try not to crush any bees. And so we can be a lot faster than this if we want to, but for video purposes and also just, uh, I like looking at what's going on. I always like to take a few moments in each bee yard and kind of really heavily inspect a couple colonies that are kind of average looking and just see what's going on because things are different from year to year. And as a beekeeper, we have to constantly be learning and trying to understand all the dynamics that are going on not just with our bees, but the predators outside the hives, the uh, pests inside the hives, the natural flows and weather and all kinds of things. I really do like these two gallon feeders. This will put a nice bit of weight in there and help stimulate a little bit more brood. And hey, thanks for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.